Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now now and Today's first reading comes from St. Paul's letter to Timothy. In St. Paul's letters to Timothy, uh, are often used for bishops, for their retreats, because St. Paul is writing to Timothy, who is a man who meet, he made a bishop. And so the advice that St. Paul is giving to Timothy is advice that St. Paul is giving to bishops. And so what does he say in uh, today's reading? He says, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority. Now, the bishop who we celebrate today, St. John Chrysostom, actually comments on this verse. And so this is really interesting to read how a bishop who is a saint, father, doctor of the church, is now commenting on this passage of St. Paul, who he is writing for Timothy, and we can say for all bishops in general. So St. John Chrysostom says that this continues upon what was affirmed in the previous chapter, that Christ had come so that all sinners would be saved. And now Timothy, as bishop, must cooperate with Christ and fight the good fight for souls. Now, St. John Chrysostom here is basically preaching to himself, right? He's meditating, trying to understand what St. Paul is saying, but obviously this is a meditation for himself, what he needs to be doing. Fighting the good fight for souls. For this reason, St. Paul first asks for supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings, because the first duty of a bishop is to pray with and for his people. Pray with and for his people. Prayer more than preaching, which is the first among the external duties of the active life of bishops. So prayer more than preaching. St. John Chrysostom is known to be this great preacher, the golden mouth. That's what Chrysostom means. But he recognizes that prayer was his first duty. That's what he learns from St. Paul, to pray for, with, and for the people. Prayers to God for light and grace for those without faith and for sinners, that they may convert. And St. Paul adds, this is good and pleasing to God who wills everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And um, St. Paul adds this, that these prayers be offered for everyone, but then he specifically adds, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a, tr a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. You see, he makes special mention of those who are leaders of society. Why? So that they might create a good society. This follows on what I was talking about last week in the definition of a good society, namely one that fosters, cultivates, facilitates the practice of virtue. That's a good society where it's easy uh, to perform virtuous actions and to choose what is good rather than what is evil. A bad society is one that makes it difficult to practice virtue. And so that's why kings and all those who are in authority, leaders, um, they should be enacting laws and really striving to um, create those conditions that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life and all devotion and dignity, all in view of salvation that the narrow and difficult way not be made more narrow and difficult, but that it be made as easy as possible, because that's what this whole talk is about, is right? It's about salvation. The previous chapter and this one. This is good and pleasing to God, who our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
So what a beautiful reflection on this memorial of St. John Chrysostom. Uh, through his intercession, let's pray for our bishops, and let's also pray for everyone, but especially for kings, presidents, and those in authority. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.